Advaita Anabhuti, the non-dual awareness. I am indicated by bliss, truth, and such. That which alone is, Shiva, the nature which is by itself ever blissful and such, I am the motionless and non-dual. Just as due to a defect in the eye, the moon, even though one, appears as if two, likewise due to illusion, the self, even though one, falsely appears as if two. Just as for those devoid of a defect in the eye, the moon is only one. Likewise, for those devoid of the defect of delusion, the self indeed is ever one. Being too appears due to a defect in the eye, in the case of the moon. So by its own delusion does the world, the universe, just as being too is false in the case of the moon, so likewise, duality is false in the case of the self. The effect of the self, space, will not arise without the self. Completeness of the effect being established how much more is this so for the completeness of the self? Just as space, being the effect, is only one and not indeed twofold, so this self, being the cause, is only one for those who know. Just as space, though only one, appears as if two, being conditioned or limited, so likewise, this self, though only one and complete, being conditioned appears as if two. Consciousness, which is the cause that is conditioned, stays as the consciousness, which is the effect, and is not greater. The space of the pot, the cloud, or this clay will not be greater anywhere. Just as space with limitation removed is only one, Likewise, the self, with limitation removed, is only one ever. Just as from space, another space is indeed not for space, because of oneness of the self also, another self does not arise from the self. Just as water, by association with a cloud, appears in the form of a water vessel, indeed likewise, the self, by association with delusion, appears in the form of the universe. By association with a cloud, Water itself appears as a rain-laden cloud. By destruction of the rain-laden cloud, there is indeed no destruction of the water. Likewise, this self, 
indeed appears by association with illusion as the manifest universe. By the destruction of the manifest universe, there is not indeed destruction of one's own self at any time. Just as a bubble arisen from water appears as if different from water, so likewise this manifest universe in multiplicity appears as if separate from the self. Just as by the destruction of the bubble there is not at any time destruction of the water. So, likewise, by the destruction of the manifest universe, there is not indeed destruction of the self. Purity and such pertaining to the sloth of a snake do not attach to the snake. Likewise, purity and such, related to the gross body and such, do not attach to this self. Just as the snake does not consider the sloth that is discarded as being itself, so always does the man of wisdom, Yanni, with selfhood, the triad of bodies renounced. Just as by the destruction of the sloth of the snake, there is indeed no destruction of the snake. So likewise, by the destruction of the triad of bodies, there will be no destruction of the self. Just as buttermilk and such, mixed with salt, is considered salty by the ignorant, the self in association with the gross body and such is wrongly considered as if the one in the gross body and such. Just as iron, wood, and others being united with fire appear like fire, the gross body and such, all being united with one's own self, appears as if the self. That which, is, that which burns is not indeed that which is to be burned. Likewise, that which is to be burned is not that which burns. The self is not indeed the non-self, and the non-self is not the one that is the self. By which the triad of Vedas shine with their meaning, like pots and walls by the sun, that indeed am I, devoid of the characteristics of being measurable and such. Just as by the shining of the sun, pots and others are as if shining, so likewise the Vedas and others are as if shining by the shining of the self. Just as flower and such, being mixed with jaggery, become enjoyable like jaggery, being connected with the self, the Vedas and such, what is to be ascertained as such, becomes satisfying like the self. The warmth of the pot, water, cooked rice, and flour is by connection with fire. As without fire, how can there be their warmth at any time? The manifestation of bodies formed from the elements 
is by union with one's own self. Without the self, how could there be the manifestation in that manner at any time? Just as in different varieties of pots exists the one space, so likewise in different varieties of bodies, I, the one, exist. Just as in the variety of pots, space does not indeed move, so indeed in the variety of bodies, I do not move. Just as when the pots disappear or are destroyed, the space in the pots is not destroyed, so likewise when the bodies disappear, I indeed am not destroyed, being all pervasive. Just as flowers that are the best as also others, remain on a thread running through. So likewise the bodies that are the best, as also others, abide always in me. Just as the best of the flowers, as also others, will not affect the thread, so likewise, being the best of the bodies, as also others, will not affect me, the one, the all-pervasive. Just as when the flowers perish, the thread is not destroyed, so likewise, when the bodies are lost, never indeed am I destroyed. Even though only one, the light of the sun appears in variety, indeed, through the apertures in the rope of a cot. Likewise, even though only the one, the all-pervasive appears as if many in various places. Just as deficiencies, deficiencies and such of the apertures in the ropes will not affect the light of the sun, so likewise the deficiencies of being in a variety of places and such will not affect me, the all-pervasive. Upon the apertures in the ropes being destroyed, the sunlight is not indeed destroyed, Likewise, upon the places ceasing to exist, I, all pervasive, am not indeed destroyed. I am not the body, it being very much the scene. I am not indeed the senses, they being elemental. I am not the prana, they being many. I am not the mind because of its movement. I am not the intellect because of its mutability. I am not ignorance because of its insentience. I am not the body, senses and such because of their destructibility like pots and such. Illuminating the body, the senses, the prana, the mind, the intellect, ignorance and others. Likewise, I illumine the ego, and one who erroneously lays claim to these, who imagines himself to possess or be these. All this manifest universe I am not because of its being an object of this intellect. I am not the eye in the deep sleep state and such, because of being the witness of the eye always. 
Just as I am changeless in the deep sleep state, so likewise am I in the other two states also. By nothing more than a slight connection, I appear as if one who is changeful. The transparent crystal is not indeed smeared or tainted by the conditionings of blue, red, and others. Likewise, the self is not indeed tainted with desire and such arising out of all of the sheaths. Just as the earth is seen as if moving around by the forehead moving around, even though it is not moving, the self is seen by the fool as if moving. Always this triad of bodies is erroneously imagined to be with selfhood, just as long as this fuel in various wombs takes birth. Sorrow and such arising from the body in the dream sleep state will not affect the body in the waking state. Sorrow and such arising from the body in the waking state likewise will not affect the self. Like the body in the waking state, the body in the dream sleep state appears indeed during sleep. By the destruction of the body in the sleeping state, the body in the waking state is not destroyed. Likewise, while awake, the body in the waking state appears like this self indeed. By the destruction of the body in the waking state, the self is at no time destroyed. Leaving this body in the dream state, the body in the waking state is sought. Even so, one who is awakened from the body in the waking state, leaving this likewise seeks the self. Just as for one who is awakened, desire for the enjoyment of a dream is not known, so likewise for those endowed with knowledge, there is not indeed desire for enjoyment in unreal heaven and such. Just as what is to be enjoyed is outside of the enjoyer, the experiencer, like what, like the serpent imagined in a stone, are those of the nature of enjoyment with form, conduct, and such, enjoyable by the self. For one who knows there does not exist indeed samsara, as it does not in the case of the ignorant one who engages in action. For one who knows there is no fear indeed, as there is in the case of the one who does not know the rope serpent. Just as a mass of salt united with water will become water, so likewise the intellect of one who knows Brahman, who is united with one's own self, is the self indeed. The sun, even though one, appears as if many in all those reflections that are supported in water. Likewise, the self, even though one, appears as if many in all places. Just as the sun in the water appears as if different from the sun in the sky, so likewise, as if different from the self, appears the reflection of the self in the intellect. 
Just as without the object, how can there be the reflection in the water? So likewise, without the self, how can there be the reflection of consciousness in the intellect? Just as movement in such of the reflection will not occur at any time for the object, so likewise doership and such are of the reflection, but are not for the self. Just as coldness and such in the water will not affect the sun in the water, so likewise action and such of the intellect will not affect the light of consciousness. Nevertheless, connected with doership and joyership, being in sorrow and such of the intellect, the reflection or light of consciousness is as one changeable, like the sun in the water existing in platters. When the waters existing in the platters are lost, the sun existing therein is as if lost. Likewise, upon the dissolution of the intellect in the deep sleep state, this self appears as if lost. The sun in the sky shines, illuminating the sun remaining in the waters, the water and the waves. Likewise, this self, the reflection of the self, the intellect and the doership in such of this intellect. The sun, the illuminator of the cloud, obscured by the cloud, shines. Likewise, the illuminator of delusion, the self, obscured by delusion, shines. Illuminating the cloud and others that are to be illumined, the sun shines. Likewise, illuminating the gross body and such that are to be illumined, the self shines. The sun, the illuminator of all, is not indeed defiled by those illuminated. Likewise, the self, the illuminator of all, is not indeed defiled by all. Just as the face existing in the mirror shows itself falsely as if the original face, so likewise the reflection existing in the intellect shows itself falsely as if it were in the self. By the destruction of what is existing in the mirror, how can there be the destruction of the original face? By the destruction of the reflection existing in the intellect, there is not indeed the destruction of the self at any time. Gods and such fashioned out of copper will shine as if different from copper. Likewise, by reflection and such with form, the universe has arisen from the self. Just as, though made of the one copper, they appear different, like Ishvara and Jivatma. Likewise, indeed, this self, though only one, falsely appears like Ishvara, the Lord, the Jiva, the individual, and such. Just as by the destruction of the Ishwara, the Lord and such, the destruction of the copper does not occur. So likewise, by the destruction of the Ishwara and the Lord and such, there is not indeed destruction of the self ever. This, superimpo this superimposed rope serpent appears as if true by the reality of the rope. Likewise, this universe appears as if real by the reality of one's own self. 
because of the non-existence of the superimposed serpent, only the rope remains. Likewise, because of the non-existence of the world, the true self alone remains. Just as there is the conditioning of redness in the transparent crystal and blueness in the sky, so likewise this universe appears as if real in the non-dual. Just as redness is a misery in the transparent crystal and blueness is false in the sky, so likewise this universe is an illusion in the one, in the non-dual, in me. By the conceptions of the jiva, ishwara and such, one with a confused mind sees differences. Surely, how will such differences arise in this, the differenceless and the attributeless? By the assumption of attributes, holding an assumed guise only, this Shiva will attain Jivahood, individuality. Upon the destruction of the attributes, assumed guise, for this Shiva, wherefrom is the envelopment by individuality or Jivahood? Shiva is indeed ever Jiva. Jiva is indeed ever Shiva. He who knows the identity of the two is indeed one who knows the self and not anyone else. Just as water united with milk is falsely seen as milk, so likewise connected with the self this non-self is seen as the self. Separating the milk from the water, it is considered a swan and not likewise. Separating oneself from the gross and such, he is the liberated one and not otherwise. Only the swan has the knowledge of discrimination as to the milk and the water, and not another. One who strives is alone one who has the knowledge of discrimination as to the self and the non-self, and not another. There is not indeed any modification of the post arising from the superimposed thief Likewise, there is not at any time arising from the universe any modification of the self which is devoid of modification. When the post is known, where is the thief? When there is no thief, where is the fear? When oneself is known, where is the universe? When there is no universe, when the universe does not exist, where is all? The three modes of qualities appear mutually in contrast with opposing different characteristics. In whom there are the characteristics of the self, he, the partless, indeed am I. in which Brahman, this triad of bodies, appears as if real. That indeed am I, the Supreme Brahman, devoid of any of the distinctive marks or characteristics of the triad of bodies. In which indwelling self is the triad of the waking state and such, as if real, that indeed am I, the Supreme Brahman, devoid of the characteristics of the waking state and such. In which Supreme Self are the triad of the universe and such as if real. That Supreme Self indeed alone I am, devoid of the characteristics 
of the universe and such. In which witness the triad of the aggregate of the gross bodies and such appears as if real, that indeed, having the characteristics of being consciousness bliss, I am the self-luminous radiance. Thus of the venerable, glorious, highest renunciate, wandering recluse and great spiritual teacher, Sri Govinda Bhagavan, whose feet are to be worshipped, the disciple, the venerable, glorious Shankara Bhagavan, by him compose the experience of non-duality, the non-dual awareness, concludes. Bye. 